flipping through notes from the real estate license I ended up giving up on. <laughs> Hello! So today we are going to talk about, well, if you're not aware, <laughs> I am an actor. That is what I do. That is what I consider my profession. That is what I went to school for. That is what I have a degree in is acting. And if that sounds weird, then this is, I guess, kind of for you. I got what is called a Bachelor of Fine Arts degree. There's a lot of things you can get a BFA in. You can get it in film, you can get it in several different types of writing, you can get it in acting, dance, music, I believe. You can get a Bachelor of Fine Arts in a lot of things. It is a four-year degree typically, so just as anyone else has a bachelor's degree, that is what I tell people I have. There are a lot of different ways to get into the arts. That is not the only one, but it is the one that I have experience with, and I think it is just... It's just a very unique path. Um, it's just very specific. It's a very specific choice and it's a very specific, I don't want to say mentality. It's just a very specific experience. And so I really wanted to make a video talking about it just because I am trying to actually talk a little bit more about my life and myself on this channel and not just my thoughts. But also I feel like when I was like dead set on getting a BFA when I was in high school, I really wish that I had had something to tell me like kind of what that looked like. Um, and maybe there were, um, I'm sure there were, maybe I just like didn't look, um, but like, I don't know. I wish that I had someone to kind of walk me through exactly what that was going to look like. A really good drama teacher actually. Um, and he kind of like gave us an idea. But anyway, I just thought this might be helpful for anyone who is interested in seeing what that might look like or sound like, or for people who are like, so how do you like, what do actors do? <laughs> um, and I don't know, this is one path. This is it. Um, so if you are at all interested, I just thought this was an interesting topic and something that like, somehow I don't feel like a lot of people talk about. Like, I just don't feel like when, before I went to college, or even now, like there are a lot of people being like, so this is what this looks like, like day to day this is what getting this degree looks like. And then day to day, this is what this job looks like after. Um, and so I think that this video is probably going to be two parts. Um, part one is going to be me just talking about getting a BFA. Um, I went to New York University and Manhattan. The program I was in was called Tisch School of the Arts. That was their arts program there. And I think that my second part is going to be talking about like the reality of what that looks like after you graduate, after school, what does it look like to be someone with this degree trying to work in the industry? What does day to day look like? What are the things that suck? What are the things that don't suck? And we'll get more into that in part two. I'm going to stop talking now. Um, no, I'm not. We're going to start talking about the actual things, um, but I'm going to stop the intro part now. Okay, so if you want to go to college for something artistic, we're just going to go with acting, um, but this can also apply to music, dance. It really depends on the institution you go to and the BFA programs that they offer. So that is kind of what I wanted to talk about first is the different paths that you can go about if you want to pursue education in the arts before um, entering the industry, or that's just what you want to do with your for their education after high school, I don't know. You have to decide what type of place you want to go to and what you want that experience to kind of sort of look like for you in general. So you can go to a traditional university, a school like I did, um, a school that people go to to do other things that aren't get a BFA, that aren't do our artistic things. I roomed with people who were going to be nurses and scientists and therapists. Or you can go to what's called a consultant Conservatory. A conservatory is a little different because it is just a concentrated institution for what you are doing. They have a reputation for being a little bit more intense. Um, I did not go to a conservatory, so I cannot necessarily vouch for that. I've heard that it is much more arts focused though, um, more 24 seven actively creating, a little bit less classroom work, sometimes shorter, and sometimes the standards are a little bit more severe. Um, for example, I know certain conservatories have a reputation for operating on a cut system. A cut system is something that you want to know if the institutions you are considering have, and if that is something that you are comfortable 
comfortable applying to and accepting and going through a program with. A CUT system is basically a institution or a program um, that operates on a basis that says you get accepted into this program, um, you pay, you know, your tuition or your fee or whatever um, for X amount of time. Usually it's after two years. Um, that's pretty common. Sometimes it's different. We do an evaluation and we cut people from the program. We tell certain people that they can stay in the program and certain people that they no longer qualify for the program, um, that they have not made enough progress or for whatever reason, they no longer qualify for the program and they can go and then they can complete their degree in another major within that institution or they can go and they can complete their degree elsewhere. Granted that that institution actually accepts credits from that place, which can be very difficult with a BFA because a lot of schools operate on their own very specific systems. And so if you start your degree somewhere, a lot of times those credits will not transfer to another school because different schools do not take other schools systems of classes seriously. That is just my experience. So are you comfortable applying to somewhere that has a cut system? Are you comfortable going into somewhere saying that after two years, I'm going to have to, you know, do this evaluation or usually it's some kind of performance review. And I may be told at that point that I am no longer allowed to participate in this program. And how do I feel about that? Am I okay with that? Am I prepared for that? Can I commit to in two years being up to that? I, I, you can tell how I feel about cut systems. I, I just don't, I don't like that idea. I don't like, but also a lot of people are like, you know, um, two years is enough for me. It's not the piece of paper. It's not the degree. It's not, you know, it's not about that. Um, and so, you know, some people really don't mind. It's a personal choice. Um, personally, I wasn't comfortable with it, but I absolutely understand people who don't mind and it doesn't factor into their decision because that just isn't what they're looking to get out of the institution. It doesn't factor into that. It doesn't necessarily affect that. Maybe they don't even necessarily want to be locked into four years. Um, now that kind of leads right into what do you want from this? What are your goals by the end, number one? And number two, what are your criteria for the place that you want to go? What do you want to see from where you are going to be getting your education or at least beginning your education? And for me personally, um, I was really stubborn, um, was a musical theater kid. I wanted to be on Broadway. Um, obviously things have changed, but I was very stubborn about having to go to a school that was based in if not New York City, New York State. Um, and so I applied to five programs that were in New York City. Um, that was one of my big criteria. My other one was that it had to have a musical theater program. It could not just have a acting program and a music program. It had to have a musical theater program. It also had to offer a four-year degree. It had to offer a bachelor in fine arts degree. So those were kind of my bigger criteria. I had some other little things at the time that I think I was looking for, but really overall, like what are your biggest, biggest things um, that you are not willing to bend on and why? And also, like I mentioned before, what is your goal by the end? What do you want to get from this? And does this place seem like that is what they are trying to provide you with, that that is what you are going to get from here and that you are excited about getting from here. I don't know, like I, people talk about their like <clears throat> picking their colleges or whatever. Um, and there are all the movies about touring colleges, but I definitely like, I don't know, when I think about the colleges that I toured and the ones that I liked the most, in the ones that I liked less. I did only tour four of them. I did not tour all five, but I did end up going to the one I liked the most. Um, and the ones that I didn't like, it wasn't for any particular, it just, I didn't feel like I fit quite correctly. Um, and you know, the arts are very personal. Um, it is very much about you and your vibe essentially, because you are your, you are your medium, <laughs> um, kind of like you, the arts are very personal. And so you want to make sure you're going with 
somewhere that understands you. Um, I don't know. Maybe that's just kind of my experience. Another thing that you do kind of have to look at is do they require a certain GPA? Do they require the ACT or the SAT? Um, some didn't require grades that were that high. Some did. Some required grades that were surprisingly high. Um, I did have to take the SAT for everywhere I applied to, all five schools, and I had to take the ACT for two of them. So since you're going to be going into a program for art, that means that you are going to have to show them some sort of art. And so if you are going for photography, you're going to have to show them your photography portfolio. If you're going for fashion, you're going to have to show them your fashion portfolio. And for acting and musical theater, you are going to have to sing and dance and act. And so you're going to have to audition. And so the auditions um, for all the musical theater programs were usually a in-person or a video submittal and then based on your video submittal you'd get a callback and then you would go to the callback in person. There was usually um, two songs and two monologues or some iteration of that. Two songs, one monologue, two and one, one and one, something like that. You needed two songs and two monologues. Typically they needed to be contrasting and so I did, you know, a happy and a sad and a happy and a sad, as you do. But really you want to kind of try and pick things that are going to highlight different elements of your strengths. So you pick one that is going to highlight this part of you and one that's going to highlight another. And then over here you're showing this part and then over here you're giving a little of this. Like, I don't know if any of this is making sense. But anyway, the in the in-person ones um, were always really exciting and really fun. There were like usually like a hundred or more people there. It was either at the school itself or it was like, like a theater or a hotel of some sort um, where they were holding the auditions. They split everyone into like three to 15 groups of like eight to 20 people each. Um, you did dance, acting, and singing. You always did dance as a group throughout the ones that I did um, and the dance submittals and video that I did. The things that you are going to want to know are a solid double pirouette, some basic tap, a good fan kick or a high kick, and at least two eight counts of freestyle of any type. That will get you through pretty much any dance call fairly well. Um, some were much more difficult than others. Um, NYU's was not nearly as difficult as some of the others, I will say that. Um, so dance was always as a group. The song and the monologue were usually alone. Sometimes they were together in front of the same people. Sometimes they were separate in front of two different people in two different locations. Um, and at one school, they, it was in front of your whole group and we all did it together. It sucked, I hated that. Um, and I think everyone else hated it too, but they made this big like deal of like, how great it was and like, and it, it was stupid. Um, I did not like it. Now, one of the things that kind of sucks about trying to get an arts degree or a BFA is that you not only have to be accepted into the school, if you're applying to a university, um, this does not apply for a conservatory. You have to be accepted into the school, like academically, basically, and then you have to be accepted into the program. And sometimes you have the grades to make it into the school, um, but the program doesn't accept you. And so you get accepted to the school and you're like all excited and happy and then you don't get accepted into your program. Um, it's really disappointing and kind of humiliating. Um, that didn't happen to me. Um, so there's that. Um, there is one thing that some schools will do is if you are applying to musical theater, you can specify and you can say, hey, like if I don't get into musical theater, I'd also like to be considered for the dance program or the music program or the acting program or whatever else. Or I would only like to be considered for musical theater, point blank period. If I can't have that, I don't want anything, honey. It kind of depends. And then that is sort of up to you to make the decision on how you feel about that and what you would be willing to accept. Personally, I auditioned musical theater for everywhere. And then 
then I said that I would be perfectly happy being placed in the acting program as well. And that is actually what ended up happening. And I am actually very grateful that it did. Okay, so from here on out, we're gonna be talking about NYU, um, the school I went to and the program I was in at Tisch School of the Arts. That is their arts program and the school that I was in at NYU while I was there. And so this is just going to be specific to my experience. This is not how all BFA programs run, but I think it will give you a general sense of like the pace and the vibe and and kind of like the type of things that you can expect to be learning about. So for your first two years at Tisch, you were placed into a studio. And studios there are Classical, ETW, Strasberg, Adler. I'll put I'll put them all here. I'm gonna forget one. Meisner. Um, I'm gonna forget one, and I don't wanna offend anybody. There were certain studios that you could be placed in your first year and you got placed in those because each acting studio had a different technique and a different approach to acting that they kind of taught and used. They had a different philosophy that they kind of went with um, with their students because art is sort of a very personal specific thing. There's no right or wrong way and so you kind of have to pick an angle to start coming at it with and so they assigned you to a studio based on Atlantic. That was the one I couldn't think of the name of. They assigned you to these studios based on the, at least from what I experienced and like what we were kind of able to deduce mostly is from the questions that they ask you during the acting portion of your audition. And so you do your audition and they kind of workshop your monologues with you. And then they ask you some questions about like your acting philosophy and your technique. Like when you are handed a script, how do you handle that? What is the first thing you do? Um, how do you go through it? You know, say you're given a week to rehearse. What do you spend that week doing? How do you use your time? What do you need? What do you think makes a good performance? What do you aim to do? Why do you like acting? What kind of pieces are you interested in being in? What is your main goal? They ask you a bunch of stuff just about you and how you connect to your craft essentially and from that they place you in what they feel is the appropriate studio and and that is where you spend three days a week i think it's like between like six and ten hours um every day it kind of varied depending on the day um like the the earliest i was ever there was like 7 30 and then the latest i was ever there was like 6 30 um at night and so that is where you spend most of your days and that is where you do your actual um up on your feet acting work the classes you take and the things that you do in studio depend on the studio that you're assigned to. I was assigned to Stella Adler. You can look it up. Um, most of the acting studios are not solely affiliated with NYU. Um, they're also New York acting studios that you can take classes at as either a student or a professional in the industry. Um, some of them are affi affiliated only with Tisch, um, not all of them though, it kind of depends. But that is where I spent my three days and then the other two days, those were kind of the two days you had to you do your academic classes. And so the academic classes were not only like the gen ed courses that like everyone has to take, but for your degree, the classroom, like academic classes that you had to take were things like we had Intro to Theater Arts 1, which was like talking you through just like the history of the theater. Like I'm talking like all the way back from the types of like theaters that the Greeks and the Romans had through Shakespeare, through like, Kathakali. There was just so much, man, like just really getting deep into like Ibsen and theater shit. Um, that and then the second half was kind of like a hands on um, of not your thing. So you had to pick something, lighting, sound, costuming, make, I picked costuming. Um, you had to pick something and um, you could do tech, you could do a lot of different things. Um, and you had to go and do that for like a, the run of a show or a certain night a week or something um, so that you could participate in a way that you were not 
used to doing and see a different side and really come full circle with your knowledge. Um, so that was another one. Um, we had a writing the essay course and it was just about writing and like responding to pieces of art, pieces of literature, pieces of film, photography, anything, um, and like writing about those and really putting our thoughts in writing and developing that skill. I had like a classical uh, Russian theater course. That was great. I loved, I loved that teacher. She was so dope. Um, there were Shakespeare classes. There were like, there were just a lot. Um, those were the kind of academic classes you had. It's like the heady part of whatever you're doing. Um, and then the other three days you're doing kind of the, the artsy up part. Um, of it. And the great thing was that you were really like, especially in studio, like you were creating and you were producing things um, and like getting up and showing things from day one. And that was great. Like it was really exciting and fulfilling and you feel like you're really doing it. But also they really like kind of like break open what you have like in the biggest way and like dig through it on every layer and like comment and like help mold parts and take pieces off and make suggestions and open things up that you didn't like it's just a lot um and it can be a lot but there will be people and teachers that you love and that you feel like get you and there will be ones that you hate and you just feel like are terrible and you just feel like you're never gonna understand whatever whatever the fuck you're trying to do, you know? And so and so you really have to take everything you're given, really like take it, like allow, don't go into this thinking that you know everything. You don't. Like this is the start. And so really take in everything you're given, really chew on it, really, really try, really like move it around in your soul. Um, and then if you hate it, doesn't work for you, not a thing, um, spit it out without worry or regret, but you do have to try. Um, you do have to make an attempt at understanding what you're being told, even if you don't like it. Um, because I feel like an open mind is something that will get you very far, um, in one of these programs, at least in my experience. That is how I feel like I got the most out of it is by being very receptive um, to the things that people were saying. And even if I didn't agree with them or like them, really paying attention to that and where it was coming from, I guess. So really the first two years um, in like your studio are about like igniting your inner artist and laying a foundation of like really good specific technical knowledge and instinct of who you are, what you're doing, and why, um, in every sense, <laughs> literal and figurative. And then I feel like the last two years are really, um, or for me, one, um, because I used a bunch of my AP credits to get my degree in three years, um, also because I didn't want to take up my student loan. It's really about like honing specific skills. Um, like you understand what it is to act, how do you do it in this context and adjust to do it well in this context? What about this one? You know, um, being, being flexible, but then also zoning into who you are, what your vibe is and like what you are trying to accomplish. Um, getting a little bit more specific into who you are um, now that you know what the fuck you're doing. <laughs> one thing that kind of surprised me was that like, for the most part, as time went on, things became less competitive. Like it wasn't about, everyone had the same assignment, man. Like, and everyone was accepted into this program. And like, a lot of people do end up, as with any major in any college, like dropping out and switching, you know? And so then like the people that are there, it's like, for the most part, you all deserve to be there. Like you are all accepted to this program. And so like, it's not about, you all have the same assignment, man. Like it's not about who did it better. Like it's more about like originality and being true to 
you um, and being grounded in your essence and something that came from you and your creativity. Um, and like not everything you do is going to be amazing. Like the amount of shit that they expect from you in one week at these places is absolutely ridiculous. Just the ability to pull a performance out of your ass like is just really like something you get good at at these places. Um, but like, I don't know, like it's not about seeing all 10 people go in a class and deciding who was the best. It's more about, at least at least for me and the people I knew well, um, it's about like what you did and how people were true to themselves and how genuine their work was. It wasn't really about like this weird ranking shit, I don't know. Um, and like how someone wasn't perfect then and fucked up this and fucked up that because I don't know, you see, you see these people that you're with, you're in this, these groups, you know, of like, like 10 people, um, for three days a week for a whole semester. And like, you see these people perform over and over again, you know, uh, that they can do really well and you know that they can do really shitty. And so like, you've done shitty too. Like, why do you need to like crap on them? Um, when they do like sometimes you know what like you went to a party last weekend and you like phoned in that thing and so they get to phone in this thing and you're gonna be quiet about it um I don't know it's it's a respect thing and it's a maturity thing but it was really nice just to get to a place just because that's not really what I experienced in high school with the arts um where like people were just allowed to do their thing and that was okay uh for the most part so one thing a lot of people ask me when they say like I went to school for like acting is did you have to do like weird shit? Yeah, uh, yeah, you do. <laughs> and, but the thing about that is that like your entire ability to creatively respond under pressure and to be embarrassed is completely broken down and rearranged. And you're, a, because you're constantly having to be vulnerable and perform not only perform but be genuine and like really like have vulnerability in front of your peers um some of which you don't you might not like um and that it teaches you a lot about yourself um and it teaches you a lot about respect and it makes you a lot stronger um doing weird stupid shit in front of people that you might not know or like or people that you do know and that you really like and you don't want them to think that you're fucking stupid um you know in any context and so like really fully being pushed forced way outside your comfort zone um and it wasn't fun <laughs> um all the time but it, it got better it definitely did with time um number one and number two you're just a lot stronger for it. Like I said, it teaches you a lot about yourself, a lot about people, a lot about respect and vulnerability. And like, I don't know, art, like not to be that, not to be that like artsy person, but like I am. Um, but it really does, like it goes back to what I said earlier about really actually being receptive. Um, because if you are you know, fighting it the whole time and just kind of like faking your way through and being like, this is stupid, this is stupid, this is stupid, I know better, I know better, I know better, or whatever. Um, and you'll you'll know um, if you're honest with yourself, if that's what you're doing or not. And, you know, if you are fighting the feedback and your, your peers um, and the assignments and the pushes out of your comfort zone, um, if you're really resisting all of that, ask yourself why. Um, and if it's because the program isn't a good fit for you, that's one thing. Um, but also if it's because of just being uncomfortable and insecure, um, maybe you just gotta try. That, that's really it. I don't know. That's really the biggest thing about this degree. I would say, at least at my school, it was very fueled by, like, you really did get out what you put in, um, 
That being said, did I feel like I got out what I wanted? Yes, 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 I definitely did. Um, I get asked that a lot as well when I'm talking about this because I have loans. Um, and people ask like, oh, was it worth it for your fucking art degree? Um, they don't ask it like that. But um, yes, it was my my pretty little art degree was worth it. Um, I do. I feel emotionally prepared to work in this industry um, and not burn out in six months. And that is not something that I feel like I would have gotten um, without this program um, and without this degree. I do not think that I would have the endurance, the resilience, the competence um, to do that without this program. Um, and I very much credit that um, to this expensive program. <laughs> Do I have regrets? Um, I will talk about that in part two. Um, cause they're, I don't know. Um, I don't regret the student loans as much as I joke about it. No. Um, if I could go back in time, I would not undo that. Um, but there are pros and cons. <laughs> there are pros and cons during, there are pros and cons after. Um, during, I would say the positive things are you really like there was not a day um that I couldn't say that I wasn't doing what I wanted to do I was definitely going to school for what I wanted to learn about I was learning about acting um I was learning about the arts in the deepest sense um and so that was really fulfilling and great and exciting and I really feel like it solidified my love for what I do and I feel like now I can really talk about why I love what I do and the things I love about it um with real passion um and intelligence and I love that um the biggest con it's it is hard to live with people who don't who aren't also in a BFA program um because a lot of your assignments are very verbal <laughs> um and sometimes like physical and so like you kind of you want to like try and like say it or do it but you live with people who like aren't in that program and like don't aren't down with that like it'd be a little awkward um I only had to deal with that for like one year though so that was fine um but yeah in terms of regrets I will talk about that in the next video all right I am sweating I need to turn the AC back on in my house um but thank you so much for watching if you made it to the end of this video I feel like this was a little random um but like I said I do kind of want to talk about myself a little bit more on this channel and like I just don't feel like I've seen very many people talk about this adequately at length um, and in detail. And so if it is of any interest to you um, or if you just kind of were curious or whatever, thank you so very much for making it to the end of this video. Um, there will be a part two hopefully coming out next week. Um, if you did enjoy it, please give the video a like to let me know that you liked it and subscribe if you would like to see more. Once again, thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Mwah. I'm sweating! Ugh. Okay.